Oh hey, what's going on athletes? Today, our video for you is eight steps to catch any punt. And if you stick around, I'll show you how to catch five of them in a row, if you wanna to get to that level. Are you good at catching punts or do you just prefer kick returns? What's easier for you? Lots of guys I know tell me that they prefer just catching kick returns and are kind of scared of going out on a punt team and returning the ball because it's a lot easier when it comes right to you compared to tracking it. So I'm making this video giving you my eight tips, eight things I do to catch every punt when it comes to me. And I've got these from coaches in the past, figuring them out myself, seeing them on YouTube, or from my trainers who played in the NFL and CFL. So these are the tips from the top quality guys that will help you catch every punt you need to catch. So first, I want you to picture yourself in a game right now. It's a close game and it's in the fourth quarter. Now the other team has the ball and it's their last down, third down in Canada, fourth down in the States, whatever you play with, and they gotta punt it. You're back there returning it. So, you know, you could either catch it, run, let it bounce, just get a couple yards, or you could be that guy, runs there, catches it clean in the air, returns it for a touchdown, and wins your team the game. Who would you rather be? Punt return, it's not just about running, catching a ball and getting a couple yards. It's about what differentiates you and what puts your team in a better position to make more plays, have better drives, and win more games. Now there's a lot that goes into it, so I'm gonna break it down in the next eight steps. Are you ready to hear them? This is gonna be what adds value to you, your draft stock, your scholarship stock. This is gonna be what separates you from the rest. Now if you're a skilled player, receiver, DB, running back, you got to return punts. This is what separates you, gets you experience with the ball in your hands, making plays, putting your team in position to win more games. You need this. Step number one, the first thing you do with punt return, you watch the kicker kick the ball and judge it in the air. Now, lots of times kickers, if they're kicking to the right, they're gonna turn their body this way, kick to the left, turn their body this way. So just get a head start by looking at him and then you start moving that direction to see where the ball is probably gonna go. Now, when you're watching the kicker, you're gonna see the ball in the air. If the ball is traveling, you know, like this, or if it's traveling like that, that's two different things. If it's moving a lot, it's gonna be a shorter kick. And if it's just kind of doing a slow dip, it's gonna be a bit further, so you'll know to back off. Also in the wind, this is really important to see where the ball is actually going, and then know to stay a bit more to the wind side anyways. Because if you see it in the air, it's coming like this, you know it's gonna be shorter, but if there's lots of wind, maybe you still stay back and then let it come right to you. So make sure you watch the kicker, see which direction he's kicking it, and then judge the ball in the air to see how deep it's gonna go. Tip number two, you wanna open up, sprint to the ball, and then square yourself up to catch it. You don't wanna just backpedal because it's a lot harder to judge the ball, and you don't wanna stay, uh, run to a spot, like catch it like this, because then you're slower to get out of there. You wanna be here, if the ball's going this way, after you judge it, sprint to it, open up, catch it in a square position, and then be able to take off and go with it. What will help you with opening up is starting in a nice athletic stance. As a DB, I naturally start low. So with punt return, I like to just be bent over, have my feet moving a little bit, so I'm able to just open up and go take off after it. Tip number three. This is one that coaches are gonna get on you for if you don't do it. So make sure you follow and do tip number three, which is catch the ball in the air. After you open up, from your athletic stance to get there, you have to catch the ball in the air for two main reasons. One, it's gonna put you in a better position on the field. If you run up to the ball and catch it, you know, even if you don't get many yards, you're right there. Your team's in a better spot for their offensive drive. And then, it's, you know, compared to if you just let it bounce behind you, you gotta go pick it up and run. Now two is the opportunity for flags. This is mainly for Canada because you have to give a five yard halo, but also in the States because they can't hit you till you catch the ball. So if it's a short kick or the gunners are closing down on you and you run, catch it in the air, there might be guys close to you when they're not supposed to be. So they can get a flag and you move the ball up even further. And then if you know the ball's just in the air for a long time, you run up and catch it, the gunner might run into you or just hit you too early. And that's another way to get a flag. That's 15 yards of free space just for catching it in the air. All right, tip number four, the actual catch. So you don't want to just catch it like you're catching a pass like this because punts are different. They have a lot of pressure coming down on you and a lot of force. So you wanna catch it with your hands low like this and you wanna have your elbows tight, just like here. 
This is trapping the ball between your hands, forearms, elbows, and body. Got a nice four points of contact there. Now the key here is to have your elbows tight so you can actually trap the ball in there. If your elbows are wide and it goes through your hands, say you just drop it or you know it's a slippery day, the ball's wet and it goes through, it's gonna bounce off you, go right to the other team. So that's why you wanna catch it, elbows tight, so it can't just drop out. And with this one also comes with the catch, also make sure you have your eyes on the ball. So you're watching it in and you make sure you see the ball through the catch. Just like you're catching a ball, if you take your head off of it too early, it's gonna bounce off your face mask, your shoulder pads, whatever, and you end up not making that catch. All right, step number five. Now for me, this has been the most crucial one for catching every ball. And if you do this after you watch the kicker, you know, judge where it's going, open up, sprint to the ball from your stance, make sure you catch it in the air, get your elbows tight. After all that, the four steps before this, if you do this one properly, I promise you're gonna catch every ball that comes to you. So what you wanna do, and it's gonna sound weird, but you wanna catch it with your chin. So if you're square, if you have to open up, your chin, it's always catching it with your chin. And what that means is that you're watching it, not to come out here with your hands, but when you're watching the ball, it's gonna come and you're trying to get it to land right about here. Not actually hitting your chin or the face mask, but just getting right in that basket. And this might sound weird until you go out and actually do it, but if you're catching it with your chin, it's gonna always end up in that basket, that tight trap that you set up for it from the other steps. So make sure you think about catching the ball with your chin because this is the best way to make sure that ball is under you and it's always coming right close to your body so it's not gonna bounce out. This helps so much. You have to go practice it for yourself, but just think about catching it with your chin. It's gonna land exactly where you want it to. You're gonna watch it in with your hands, catch it in here, you know, fourth down, uh, fourth quarter, doesn't matter. You're gonna be the one to make the plays, return the ball, get yourself looks, get your team wins, because you catch it with your chin. All right, step number six. Now this adds on to staying square when you catch the ball. You know, you wanna always be in the position where the ball's in front of you so you can take off. Now what you wanna do is have your legs in a staggered lunge position. So right when you catch it, you're in like a sprinter stance so you can run out of there. This is what I really like to do. Uh, don't get too low with it, because if your knee touches the ground, it's probably gonna be a dead play when the ref blows the whistle. But just catch it, be ready to take off with it, because when guys are coming downfield, they usually expect the punt returners to dance around, take a look for a bit. But if you know where you're gonna go, and I'll make a video for uh, how you know how to set up blocks and where you're gonna go after the catch later. But if you, know, if you look, take a bit of peace when you're watching the ball in the air, just a little check with your eyes, then you already know where you're gonna go. So if you catch the ball in a lunge position, sprint out of there, get there quick, you're gonna have more blocks set up, you're gonna make more plays, score more touchdowns, and just be a better all around returner because it's all about speed back there. If it's kickoff return, punt return, you gotta see that gap, hit it fast. Now, if you gotta wait for a block to set up, that's one thing, but this is the best way to get out of that one position into your next position through a smooth transition. Tip number seven. Now I've already talked about this, but it's bursting out. If it's in practice or the games, whenever you catch the ball, you wanna take a few hard steps out of there just to get yourself used to it. This is also gonna help you on offense or defense. So if you're getting used to catching interceptions or it passes, you're just used to getting out of there right away. So it's not like Madden, when you catch the ball and the camera turns to the other side and you start running. Right when you catch it, you go out of there to be the first one with the end zone, untouched, make a play. Pick six athletes. Last one, number eight. It's all about reps. When I first started catching punts, you know, it was kind of hard. I had good hands to start with always, so it wasn't too difficult to get used to it, but I'd be dropping them, you know, bounce off the face mask, bounce off the chest, catch them on the floor sometimes, not get to every punt. So with more reps, you know, before practice, after practice, if you're always catching about, you know, 20 punts a day, you're gonna get so used to it, and you'll implement all the steps open up, catch it, keep the square up, left chance, take off, first out of there. Reps make it a lot easier. It's just like you see Odell catching one-handed, you know? He doesn't just get here that naturally. That's all from the work. You see on Instagram, the video with the jugs machines, throwing the balls, it's all work. So the more punt reps you catch, you gotta get your reps in. The more punt reps you catch, the easier it's gonna come to you. That's the biggest thing. Make sure you're catching all of them too. Don't just let it bounce off your chest, hit the ground. Make sure you're running, catching every single ball in the air, and you know that's within reason. Uh, then getting out there, 
and working on the eight steps, the opening, staying square, all of that, because the more times you do it, the easier it's gonna come in a game. If you put yourself in the game positions, then by the time you're in the game and you go back there, that fourth quarter, like we talked about, it's not gonna feel weird. You're not gonna be telling yourself, oh shit, I hope I don't drop it, I hope I don't drop it. You're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna catch this. I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it in. And then I'm gonna take off and make a play. You know, make a couple guys miss, score a touchdown. That's what's gonna go through your head. You're not gonna be worrying about what could go wrong. You're gonna be thinking about what could go right because of the reps and the work that you put in following these eight steps. Now in the next clip, you'll see me catch five of them in a row. We had only five balls, so who knows where I would have stopped that. But by following these tips, it's a bit weird because sometimes you're holding balls, so you can't do all of them right. But by following the principles, you know, catching with your chin is the biggest thing. That's how you get to that level where you can just keep catching more balls and it's natural. It's easy stuff when you work at it. Enjoy the video and smash that like button if you think you could catch five or more too. And then let me know in the comment section what you think about this whole video, if you have any other tips, and also how many balls you could catch. Are you a you know zero person, you can't really catch them yet, one to two, maybe just holding one like this, one like that, or can you catch three and above? Can you catch a bunch of balls because you follow the steps, use your chin, and are becoming elite, and not just your position, but special teams too, because you are a dynamic player. Don't forget to share the video with your teammates because we're not just in it for us. Yes, we want to make plays, we want to get the looks, but it's all about the team. It's all about your brothers out there. The more games you win, the happier you'll be. And if you get that goal of the championship, nothing in the world comes to it. So make sure to share with your teammates, get everyone you know right, and then together, we will become great. Whatever you got going on today, you be great at it. Attack the day, do what you gotta get done, get your reps in, your sleep, eat right, get your workout, go to work, school, whatever it is, give it your 100%. And remember, today could be the last day. So give it all you got, don't look back, be great.